If you haven't figured it out already, today we are talking about the SIM, or SIEM. At least, that's how my audiobook pronounces it, so that's what I'm rolling with. The organization replaced the Department of State for Security around 1957 in the Dominican Republic. Much like how the Gestapo helped keep Hitler in power not 30 years prior, the SIEM served as then-dictator Rafael Trujillo's secret police. Like most secret police forces, the existence of the organization wasn't secret at all. Repression by fear doesn't work if people don't know they are being repressed. Help! Help! I'm being repressed! All jokes aside, calling these people despicable human beings is an insult to despicable human beings. I've never been so insulted! At their most benign, the word benign only present here through extortion, seems served as a someone could be watching you at any time type deterrent, like if Google Home had guns. At their worst, well, there's a bloody laundry list of crimes against humanity that we'll get into later. Seems nature as a weapon of fear meant to keep the citizenry in line manifested in a number of ways. For example, they drove distinctive-looking and distinctively noisy black Volkswagen bugs. This way, they could send an entire city block into a fit of paranoia, all without needing an actual agent on the scene. That said, people don't learn to fear an engine noise simply because secret police are driving the cars. All too often, the threat of repression was backed up with blood and steel. This brings us to one Johnny Abez Garcia, the piece of work who headed seam for most of his existence. Initially born in Santo Domingo as the son of a German-American and a Dominican woman, he found himself in Mexico City in the mid-1950s. There he worked as an official in the Dominican Embassy, gathering information on anti-Trujillo dissidents. Johnny returned to the Dominican Republic in 1956 before becoming head of SEAM in 1958 after being introduced to Trujillo by the dictator's half-brother. During his tenure, Johnny would be guilty of, among other things, the arrest, torture, and murder of hundreds of protesters and conspirators, as well as the assassinations or attempted assassinations of no less than three foreign presidents. After Trujillo himself was finally assassinated, Abez did his best to hunt down the assassins, eventually killing most of them. Abez attempted to have Trujillo's son take the place of his father, but ultimately failed. Abez then left the country, traveling in Europe for several years before moving to Haiti. There, he worked as a national security advisor before disappearing in 1967. One prominent claim is that Abez met his death after coming under suspicion for plotting to assassinate the Haitian president and then had his house bombed. Now that we have something of an idea about the guy running seam, let's take a look at some of their more notable assassinations and operations. In 1958, we have the case of Jesus de Galendez Suarez. This unlucky sod was a Colombian doctoral student who wrote his dissertation on Trujillo. He disappeared off the streets of Manhattan after Seam offered a huge pile of cash for the manuscript. Galendez refused and was never heard from again. Allegedly, he was abducted by Seam and flown to the Dominican Republic where he was executed. In 1960, we have the attempted assassination of Romoro Betancourt. This guy was the communist leader of Venezuela at the time and was known for trying to overthrow Trujillo. Betancourt had previously condemned Trujillo to the Organization of American States. This led to Trujillo considering Betancourt a personal enemy and the subsequent dispatch of assassins. Though the ensuing car bombing failed, Betancourt received severe burns. As a consequence, the Organization of American States severed diplomatic ties and imposed economic sanctions on the Dominican Republic. Also in 1960, we have the murder of the Mirabel sisters. Patria, Minerva, and Maria, along with their driver, were stopped by SEAM agents on their way home from visiting their imprisoned husbands. The girls were strangled and clubbed to death before the car was driven off the road to make the whole thing look like an accident. Finally, in 1961, we have the executions of the assassins who killed Trujillo. Seem engaged in a raid of terror following El Jefe's death, in which hundreds of suspects were detained and tortured. Eventually, they tracked down six of the seven conspirators who were executed at Hacienda Maria on November 18th. Now, even though Seam wasn't officially founded until 1957, it plays a huge role in the novel in the time of the butterflies. From the get-go, the SEAM and organizations like it are a major source of fear, a spy network that is watching everyone from behind the scenes. The first mention by name is on page 153, wherein Abes, who is also mentioned by name, is dragging off all the young men like King Herod and the baby boys of old. This pattern continues throughout the novel, with friends and family being carted away, surrounded by the constant paranoia that someone could be listening at any time. Some new permutations do appear, though, including the incident where Seam plays prostitutes to desecrate a church once the conflict between religion and state had heated up. Further, the novel directly fingers several government officials in connection to torture. The text reads, There was a bunch of them already waiting in the interrogation room. Tall fat Johnny with his Hitler mustache, the one called Candido with the curly hair, then a bug-eyed one that kept cracking his knuckles to make the sound of breaking bones. Johnny is, of course, Johnny Abez, while Candido is Colonel Candido Torres, who becomes the director of SEAM after Abez leaves. 
And there you have it. That's The Seam, a brutal secret police organization that ruined the lives of countless thousands of people. Thankfully, this is one group of monsters who have been consigned to the furnace of history.